Now that the jaw is isolated, we're ready to go ahead and restitch the STL. Now, right now we're in surfaces panel. We need to go back to model manipulation. And this is the uh, panel that we'll do all of our stitching from. So rather than matching teeth, which is what we did last time, we want to do the points method of aligning. So click points and make sure you have it on the correct STL. We've only got one in the case right now, mandible, and then we'll click align. So this window will come up and obviously you can see the isolated jaw. If you could imagine the uh, maxilla being up there, you just wouldn't be able to, to see these things correctly. Now, what you want to do is orient these two models in the same position. So let's just orient them looking straight down from the occlusal on both models so that you have the same perspective on both. And now I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so I'm going to get it where maybe I've got about four teeth width in the screen. And I think this is important because it, it, again, makes sure that you have the exact same perspective on both models. Because here we want to be extremely specific with our points. So I'm looking for distinct things. I'm looking for cusp tips, occlusal grooves, wear facets. Those are all really nice stitching points and sizal edges. Uh, so this looks like a very distinct cusp tip. I'm going to put one right on the tip. And then I need to do the exact same thing on this one. And we do that by just pushing shift. And when you push shift, it's going to turn into a crosshair, which you can drop a point with. So I'm going to proceed around the arch, uh, doing that on all of these places. You want to get some buckle, some lingual. You definitely want to make sure you spread them out where you have points, both anteriorly and posteriorly. Uh, because otherwise you can end up with a great stitch in the posterior, but as you get farther and farther away from those points, uh, you lose the stitch. Now as we come toward the anterior, uh, I like this big wear facet on the canine, so I'm going to put one directly in the middle of that wear facet. I like incisal edges, so I'm going to angle this up slightly. Right in the middle of that incisal edge is a good stitching point. Cusp tip of the canine, and we'll just proceed around the arch this way. And you're shooting for seven to ten points. More than that, you start getting diminishing returns. Less than that, you can end up with a poor stitch. Um, and if you do this and it's not ideal, you may have to go back and redo it and add some points or take away some points that were errant. Uh, but I have nine points. This should be more than enough. And as you can see here, uh, they're spread throughout the arch, so I'm going to click OK. Now, when I do this, watch the alignment of that uh, model outline change. All right, did you see that? It was quick, I know, but now if I look at the model outline, it is much more tightly adapted, and so I can scroll through the arch, and I should see this tight adaptation throughout the entire scan. Okay. Anteriorly, posteriorly, it doesn't seem to matter where I am, that is adapted tightly. Again, sometimes you'll end up with a nice adaptation in the posterior or the anterior, but it's not on the opposite side of the arch. Same thing with the axial view. If I scroll up and down, now I see these cusp tips disappearing at the exact same rate as my model outline is. So this is a good stitch. I am comfortable with this. It's always wise at this point to go ahead and save the case. Uh, because once you've completed important steps like that, you would hate to have a crash and then have to come back and redo any of that. All right, so now we are ready to proceed with the treatment planning on this case. We've plotted nerves. There's an STL model in position. And so at this point, I really don't need uh, the 3D rendering of this mandible. I'm going to go to the surfaces panel. So all of your surfaces, both your STL and your CT surfaces, are going to be listed here. And right here under CT surface, where it says visible, I'm going to uncheck that. That's going to take that out of the view so that I can just be looking at this clean STL data in the 3D rendering. All right. You've also got up here your STL models, and the hint is this model, model outline. So if I turn that off, you see how the model outline disappears. Turn it back on, it reappears. Visible is just making it visible or invisible in the 3D rendering window. I don't know why this is collapsing on me. 
And then if you want to change colors, all you got to do is click on the color and you can change the color of your STL model. All right, so this is very uh, intuitive in that uh, window. And at this point, we need to uh, do prosthetic treatment planning. So we want to put a prosthetic tooth in there so that we know what uh, the, the end restoration should uh, be emerging through. So I'm going to click on Add Tooth. When I do that, this menu will come up and I'm going to choose the particular tooth that I'm using. Uh, we can just go with medium, that's fine, and I'm going to click OK. Now this could be dropped in any of these windows. You could drop it in the pan, you could drop it in the 3D. I'm going to drop it into the pan view. But then once it's in there, I do all of my fine tuning of the positioning in this window because I feel like it's much easier to see. So notice here, if I hover on the red tooth, you're going to see a number of widgets appear. There's rotation rings, uh, there's these little dots. So to learn the functionality of how this moves around, if you just click on the red of the tooth and you're not clicking on any of those rotation widgets, click and hold and you can bodily move this tooth. So I can move this up into the arch form. Okay. I could click right here again, not on any of the widgets, and I could pull it more into the center of the ridge. Now we can start looking at these rotation widgets. And so if I look at it from this view and I was to grab this ring, click and grab, and I can rotate it in that plane. Whatever plane that ring is in, I can rotate in. If I look at it from the occlusal, I can rotate it in this plane. And I obviously need to rotate this from the buckle. So if I grab the green ring, click and tilt it over. Now that's looking much better. Okay, so I still want to grab the tooth, put it right in the center of this ridge. I could move it down. Sticking up a little high, closely. Now you've also got the ability to stretch the tooth to make it fit the space more appropriately. So if I was to look at it from the uh, vertical axis, I could grab this one and stretch it up or down, make the tooth taller or flatter. Uh, it was pretty good where it was at, so I'll leave that. If you look at it from the occlusal view and hover, you're going to see the pink rings. If I grab those, I can pull outward and that will stretch the tooth mesial distally uh, in all directions. Okay. So the tooth looks like it's in the appropriate position in the arch. Maybe rotate it just a slight bit more, and that looks good. Now, once you like the tooth position, right-click on the tooth and lock it because it never fails. If you don't lock it, you're going to accidentally grab one of those rotation rings, and you'll knock it out of position after you've spent the time to align that. So now the tooth is in position. We are ready to plan the implant. Okay, so we can see bone, we can see the anatomy, we know where the nerves are, we know where the prosthetic endpoint is. This is going to make planning the implant much, much easier. Okay, just like we've added teeth and nerves, we're going to click on the plus implant. And this is where you would choose your implant of choice. You've got the option of all the Blue Sky implants, obviously. Then you've got these other companies. Uh, and that will be a list that continues to grow as other companies add their guided surgery systems to our software. Uh, if you don't see one that you uh, particularly use, you can put in a custom implant and put in that particular size. But I'm going to use the implant that I actually placed, which is the Biomax. I'm going to select that. This is going to be, this is a very wide ridge, so I'm going to go with a 5 by 10 millimeter implant. And you want to choose the proper uh, orientation, so this will be a mandible. Not a huge deal if you don't select that, it'll just drop it in upside down. And then one additional thing I like to do is to go up here and move over to the tab that says abutment. And I like to put on, every case I do, I like to put on a custom abutment that is 20 millimeters long and 3 millimeters in diameter. Now the only purpose in this abutment is to give me a visualization of where that implant is going to emerge. I think you'll see that in a moment. So if I click OK, right now my mouse is turned into an implant. That means it's ready to drop it into position. I'm going to click in the pan view or any of the other views, and the implant has now been dropped into the case. I can move that around similar to the tooth by just clicking on the implant body and moving it. I can grab any of the rotation rings, and if I grab the ring and move it, you'll see the orientation change a bit. I can bodily move it in this window. 
Now, as I said earlier, when I was going over the tangential window, what I like to do is I like to generally get this in position and then I do all of my fine tuning in this tangential window. I will uh, maximize that to full screen. And this to me is a much easier window to do my planning in because just by moving the scroll ball, I can see this in every dimension um, very quickly. I don't have to jump between multiple windows. I can look at it in cross section and then very quickly be looking at it from a lateral view. So paralleling the uh, adjacent tooth's roots. Pull that over just a little bit. You can see I'm coming right through the buckle groove with the emergence. And so very quickly, I'm able to position that into an ideal position. I'm making sure that I have my zone of safety from the nerve. I uh, am not impinging on any of the buccal or lingual walls. I'm about a millimeter subcrestal. So this would be to me an ideal placement. And I can look at where the implant would emerge. So again, the point of that abutment is that I like to see this and that gives me a good indication that if I were to do this as a screw retained restoration, where would the emergence be uh, through that prosthetic tooth? And that would obviously be very good. So once you've done that, again, lock it. Otherwise, you may end up knocking it out of position accidentally. So right click, lock implant. And now you are ready to make the guide. So to make the guide, the first thing you need to do is to turn on the guide tube. I can do that by going to the implant list panel that can be gotten to from right here, implant list, or you can just double click on an implant and it will pull that up immediately. And you can see you've got your option of drill kits. And so I'm going to plan this as if it were a Blue Sky Bio direct cut drill case. That's the single cut drills. It's a very efficient and affordable uh, way to approach guided surgery but you could just as easily choose any of those other kits that were available. Um, they're all in there. You can even put in custom kits. So if you want to be able to enter manually a uh, particular uh, kit that's not in there for a certain guide tube, all of that can be done down here uh, where I put in a guide hole diameter, the height, the offset. Blue Sky is one of the few programs that gives you full control over that. But again, I am going to use the Blue Sky Direct Cut Drills and then I've got to turn on the guide tube. So if I stretch this out where you can see everything, uh, this is your implant list. And again, this is your implant visibility that will turn that on and off. Okay, so if I was to turn that on or off, you'll see that disappear. If I turn the abutment on or off, it will disappear. And then this is your guide tube. You absolutely have to turn that on before you fabricate a guide. Otherwise, you're just going to end up with a nice night guard. Okay, so I've got my guide tube turned on. This tooth is in the way though. I don't really need this anymore because I've already done my treatment planning. So up here in the top menu, you're going to see there's the plus implant nerve and tooth, but there's also just an implant nerve and tooth. These purely turn on or off the visibility of those things. So if I just click this, you'll see the tooth disappear. It doesn't get rid of it. I can bring it right back, but it just gets it rid of the visibility. Okay. Now, maximize the 3D window, and you can see here that I've got a tube in position. Now, the positioning of this guide tube, where that tube is vertically is known as the offset. So the software is going to default to something. I, because I've done this enough times, I know that that little bit of impingement is not going to be an issue, but let's say that I thought it might be. I could raise the offset. That means I could pull the tube up out of the gum tissue. Now doing that change means that now the short drill that it had defaulted to is not long enough. And that's why now it's defaulted to a long drill, Blue Sky Bio direct cut drill, which is going to have a much higher drill stop. And these green things, again, are unique to Blue Sky's system. This is a drill stop, which enables you to not have to use keys and uh, you know depth stops and all of those things. It's just built into the guide. And the software accommodates for that for you. Um, so again, you can play with the offset, and if you have a particular system that it has a built-in offset that it must use, that's where you would do it. Your guide tube height is the vertical height right here, and your guide hole diameter is this. Okay, now realize that is not your guide tube. You're going to insert a metal tube into this hole. This is just going to be plastic, okay? 
So don't get those confused. Remember, in the end, you're going to be inserting a metal tube into it. And this guide hole diameter should usually be about 0.1 millimeters larger in diameter than whatever the outer diameter of your metal guide tube is. If it's the exact same, it's going to bind and not fit. Okay, so the guide tube is on. The implant is locked. We are ready to make the guide. I'm going to go to panels and this is called the guide fabrication panel. All right. Guide fabrication panel. Again, make sure you've got the correct model selected. This is the only one we have in this case. Lock the implants in virtual teeth. You don't want this moving around once you've set it. Use the automatic brush. Don't bother yourself with what that is right now. Built-in drill stops. If you are using these single cut drills, you will want to check that. And then I always choose high quality on the guide. Choose the proper uh, orientation, mandible or maxilla, and now you're ready to draw the guide outline. So click draw curve and you'll see that this is red, but if I'm clicking over here, nothing is happening. What I need to do to begin drawing the line is I need to push the shift button and I'm just pushing and holding it. And you can see when I do that, my mouse has turned into a crosshair. Okay. If I let it go, it goes away and I gain back my mouse functionality. So I want to begin drawing the um, perimeter of my guide. So I push shift and then I left click and hold and I can begin drawing a line. Usually make this about right at the CEJ. And if I let go, at some point I need to let go and reorient this model. So I let go of shift, that goes away. I can reorient and now I can push shift again and continue my line on. We'll go to about this other canine. Let go of shift, reorient, come across the incisal edge, and now I can look at it from the lingual. And you'll notice I'm not making any effort to zoom way in and exactly continue the line. The software knows what you're doing. And so just get close to it and continue the line on. And now I should be able to complete it. All right, so the line is completed. Once I've done that, click edit curve. Okay, edit curve will bring up the nodes where you can fine tune the positioning of the guide perimeter. So I'm going to reposition these as necessary. And again, I usually like this to come into the CEJ. Uh, if you're going to be flapping, then you don't want to make this go way down here because then you'll have to either make a huge flap or you'll accidentally crush your flap with the guide. So I usually make it follow pretty close to the guide tube. And so you can get as picky with this as you want to get. That looks good to me. And so once that has been done, I can push create surgical guide. Uh, because we're using the Blue Sky single cut drills, it matters which handpiece we're using. Phone call, hang on. Okay, apologies, uh, another phone call. Hard to keep turning thought here. Um, you do need to tell the, the software which handpiece you're using when using the Blue Sky direct cut drills because otherwise, it doesn't know how much of the drill is sticking out of the handpiece. And remember, the handpiece is actually the vertical stop. Uh, that, that stop is going to bump into the head. So since every handpiece swallows a different amount of the shank of the drill, you need to tell it which one you're using or you need to input custom numbers. Uh, let's say we're using this X-Cube handpiece. It will program everything automatically. I don't have to do anything. And now when I push save, it is going to begin fabricating this guide. And now the software has fabricated the guide. You can see it right here. And um, this is going to show up as another surface in our STL uh, surfaces panel. We can change colors. We can make it really just, you know, whatever you want it to be. You can turn on the hint. You can turn on or off the visibility. Uh, let's turn off the visibility of the gingival model, and we can now see this surgical guide in its entirety. Now, if you'll remember, we had that little area where the tube was impinging into the gum. If I turn off all the implant visibility, you'll notice that the actual guide is not impinging, and that's because the software knows that uh, it can't impinge into that, so it's going to essentially block out that amount of the guide tube and uh, you won't have that impinging into tissue. 
The only other thing you might want to consider doing is in the guide panel, you, you have the ability to emboss text onto uh, the guide. And so we could go to the guide panel and down here toward the bottom, there is what's called the text tool. Uh, we could put, you know, the patient's name into this. And if you want to use this tool, it's a little odd. Uh, the text will appear as one size and you position the model behind the text. And however it appears right here, when I push apply text, it's going to emboss it into that position. Okay, so if you have a lot of cases going and multiple guides in cold sterilization, uh, this is a nice way of keeping track of what's what. And now that's embossed. You could put implant sizes, all of that fun stuff. And the only other thing you might want to consider doing is um, perhaps running a drill report. So you can go to file and you can run a drill report. And this is the shot that's going to come up. And so it has multiple screenshots that it auto generates. Uh, we never went over this, but this button right here, which is available in all of the windows, will capture screenshots. So if you saw an image of something you wanted to capture, you can just push that. It will add that to this list of items in your drill report. If I now push a PDF of the drill report, it will generate PDF. And you can see that here. Uh, I print these out and, and I tape these up behind the patient and it's just nice to have at a glance all of the information. I can see the nerve, the implant positioning, uh, all of my surgical references. And this way I don't have to be degloving and going through the uh, software to, to navigate through and see these things. So print that out, scan it in, put it in the patient's record. That will be a good reference if you ever need it in the future. Um, but that is basically it. And I realized this uh, probably in total took 40 minutes or longer to uh, show this um, guide. But honestly, once you learn to do this, I've been doing lots of talking and teaching through it. Once you're comfortable with the software, a, a simple case like this is going to take you five minutes tops to plan. Uh, and then the only other thing that would be necessary is to export this uh, file, export data. And you're going to see all the surfaces in the case come up. And I don't want to export the nerves. I don't want to export the gingiva. The only thing I want to export is the surgical guide. And as you can see here, it says exports 51 remaining. Uh, this is the only point in which Blue Sky charges anything for this process. And you purchase these exports. You can get a volume discount. It will probably range from $15 to $20 for that export. And it's one per case. It's not every single time you export. I could make 10 guides in this case. I'm only going to get charged one export. So once I click this, it will take one of those away. And when I run out, I would have to purchase more. I'm obviously not going to waste one here. Uh, but that is the end of that case. Uh, so we'll come back and do case number two. And